Hi, my name is Adam Schiff from Loyola University Medical Center outside of Chicago. Today we're going to show the Stryker Variax 2 fracture plating system as it pertains to the first tarsal metatarsal joint. These can be used for um, both fracture fixation and for fusions like a lapidus, and we'll demonstrate that here. So for this procedure, we'll be highlighting the Stryker Variax 2 fracture plating system for a first tarsal metatarsal joint. This can be used for fractures of the first metatarsal or Lis Frank dislocations, the first TMT joint. It can also be used for lapidus fusions or uh, arthrodeses of that joint uh, as well. Uh, we'll demonstrate all of its uses here. Uh, to begin, I prefer a dorsal medial uh, approach, sort of in between the EHL and tibial analysis anterior, uh, certainly cheating towards the extensor hallucis longus. The first move is to find the extensor hallucis longus tendon to protect it. Uh, the deep bundle, this is more lateral uh, than this, uh, but knowing where your extensor halus longus tendon will, it will certainly protect your deep neurovascular bundle of the deep perineal artery. So here we have extensor halus longus tendon, which we'll put a home and retractor uh, behind to protect it, then exposes our first tarsal metatarsal joint. First tarsal metatarsal joint is here. Once we kind of have our area isolated, uh, essentially you're right down to capsule and bone. You can uh, start beginning, you can begin subperiosteal dissection here uh, to isolate your joint uh, and preserve uh, these tissues for uh, uh, later repair and closure. The stout ligaments or the strong ligaments uh, of this joint are plantar, and so taking down the dorsal capsule uh, should not destabilize this joint. Um, if you're checking for instability uh, with Liz Frank uh, injuries. Uh, for Liz Frank injuries, I prefer a dorsal plating of the first tarsal metatarsal joint as opposed to transarticular screws. Uh, essentially, it's um, really surgeon choice. Uh, both have uh, very similar biomechanical strengths. Um, I prefer the dorsal plating to try to preserve uh, the joint and uh, avoid several screws going across the joint. Uh, the reason for not fusing this joint is to try to maintain motion later uh, with potentially hardware removal uh, and putting those transarticular screws uh, can certainly potentially lead to uh, some degenerative changes of the joint so i prefer a dorsal plate and here is our first tarsal metatarsal joint right there this can be confirmed by fluoroscopy to ensure this is the correct joint um, there it is, this being the medocaneiform and the base of the first metatarsal. Uh, we can take our Gelpie retractors. This will serve as our retractor. I prefer Gelpie retractors uh, uh, to Wheatlanders uh, just because they're deeper and they put a little less tension on the skin, potentially hopefully help with um, avoiding a, a skin injury uh, from retractor placement. And here's our joint. Again, there's several reasons why um, you would approach it this way and then ultimately uh, apply your fixation. Uh, for fusions, uh, the next move would be to remove uh, the cartilage um, and subchondral bone that can be done with uh, curettes and acetomes or a saw blade. Um, for uh, fixation, uh, obviously you want to leave the cartilage intact and that's what we'll do uh, for this. So we would use the Stryker Varix 2 uh, fracture plating system. These are the Y plates. This is a good configuration for this uh, particular use uh, as you can get two screws uh, in the cuneiform uh, transversely and you don't really risk uh, going down to uh, the navicular. We can use olive wires here to help uh, position our plate and to hold it. Here. And so now we have provisional fixation of our plate. You get three screws in the cuneiform and uh, two or three, as many as you'd like, in the metatarsal. Uh, this does have the advantage of offering compression. So if you were using this for a fusion or a lapidus type surgery, um, there is a, a compression slot in the plate to allow uh, compression between the tarsal and metatarsal joints. So uh, we have our plate applied and provisionally fixated with our olive wires. The olives again go in the screw holes, not in the um, K wire slots because the the olive portion um, sort of acts as a head of a screw and helps contour the plate at least a little bit. Here we can get an x-ray and confirm our position of the plate, confirm that we like this. These take both 3.5 millimeter screws and 2.7 millimeter screws. 
since it's a first metatarsal, 3.5 millimeters is a great size. And then cuneiform, again, 3.5 millimeters uh, is another good size. Uh, for that, we would use a 2.6 millimeter drill bit. In the striker system, it's the double orange to denote the appropriate drill bit and screw size. So typically here, I would start with the more proximal screws. That does allow the us to use a compression slot later if we'd like. Uh, these are variable angle locking, so they will lock in um, 15 degrees. Here we'll use non-locking screws to help contour the plate. We can still put in one more non-locking screw here. We can utilize our Y. You, you don't necessarily need three screws in the cuneiform, um, but I would prefer that if possible. to ensure that the screw does not cross the tarsal metatarsal joint. Um, so you can confirm that on fluoroscopy. Okay. Once the screw goes down, we'll have three points of fixation on this plate already. And so that olive wire is not all that necessary uh, on the distal fragment. Uh, this plate can't really rotate once there's fixation in more than one plane. These plates have excellent malleability uh, that began to move. Um, we will pull our last olive wire and then start with our fixation um, distal uh, to help counteract the contour. Uh, if we were to use compression, uh, this would be the time to use uh, the compression sleeve. The guide does instruct how to use the compression ramp, but you're essentially going to drill eccentrically. Uh, since we're not going to put this in compression, uh, we will just start with our most distal screw. Again, I use 3.5 millimeter screws, non-locking in the first in the tarsal. And we're in the diaphysis of the bone here, so the screw is much shorter than the ones we've been using. I also to keep in mind that our plate's considerably off the bone, so even though we're measuring uh, a 20, if we put in a 16 uh, millimeter screw, it should have uh, be the appropriate size. Uh, once this plate contours down. Again, this needs to be a non-locking screw uh, in order to contour the plate. If this is a locking screw, it will simply lock in and won't uh, contour the plate quite as uh, well as we would hope. As the screw goes down, you can see uh, very nice uh, con uh, contourability of the plate. We'll go and put another screw in uh, distally. Depending on the indication for the surgery, whether it be a fracture or dislocation, uh, in good healthy bones, sometimes two uh, distal screws is enough. Um, ideally, we would get three screws uh, distally, though, to have six cortices of fixation. And then we have another screw with excellent bite. Because the plate contour is even better, we got to come back to our proximal, or excuse me, our most distal screw and compress that down even further. Okay, we'll put one more screw in. And again, the plate continues to compress nicely. Point. There we have a nice solid fixation of our first tarsal metatarsal joint.